Well, hello. Today is the last race of the Burton Cup. Um, you haven't had the last two because it's been 30 knots of wind and rain and I couldn't get my camera equipment out. Um, but it's been fantastic. Um, it's really scary because we could either become first or second overall today. Ah! Don't like pressure, do I? Um, anyway, it's beautiful. Um, about 15 knots of wind and sun. Yay! Right, that's the one minute. Irene's quite on the line, aren't they? Hopefully, they too much on the line. Yeah. Still got engine going. I can't see. Irene you mean Steve? You always get. <laughs> so, the conditions for today's race weren't what you'd call exciting, but they were what you'd call nice. It is autumn after all, and the sun was out, or at least it was for a lot of the race. We had enough wind, although there were some quiet patches, and there was a few boats on the water. So all in all, promised to be a nice day on the water. What can we do? <coughs> Go along. So as you can probably tell, the hooter didn't go off, and we couldn't really see the flags. But then equally, we couldn't really see any flags that suggested there was anything wrong, and as no one else turned round, we carried on as well. We didn't get a hoot, but we all managed to make a really good start then. Equally, there's no one, there's no jump start sign, so we're all right. <laughs> Can we get your little pole on it, Steve, and hold the leech down a bit? at 2.1 but hopefully shorter distance. I'm going to pick up some deep water in a minute though. Maybe it's going to be too tight all the way for their height and I really want to play it. Ian thinks the trimarang sh maybe shouldn't have put it up in this position. I think they're furling it again, yeah they're furling it. Sure, that trimaran should go quicker. So we've got a Contessa, a Swan, and Gothic behind us. Uh, the wind, the wind, the wind. Come on, come back, come back. It's gonna go boom in a minute. Ahead of muskrat, so I think our tactics worked then because technically they are a faster boat nice than us. When a faster boat overtakes you, and then five minutes, ten minutes yeah, later, yeah, you're back. ahead of them. Especially if they were teasing us. I don't want to be teased. I'm going to try again as well. More impressive is we're in front of the swan. It's a quick boat, that swan, and you think if it suits us, it'd suit them. So. Yeah. What are you drinking, Porter? Hot coffee. Yay. With um, whitener or creamer and uh, one sugar, hopefully. Yeah. So it'll be hot because it's got no milk in it, it's just powder. That's fine, thanks. So today's course would be a fairly normal one for our river, in that we'd start at the Medway Cruising Club line around Boy 29 and then head off downriver taking 15 to port and 13 to starboard on the way, skirting the exclusion zone at the gas refinery, before heading round the North Kent Boy 
then the South Kent boy, before beginning the journey back. On the way back, we'd have to take 14 to starboard, the West Bullock wreck mark to port, 16 to starboard, as well as the normal 19 port, 27 port, which were traditional marks on our river, before finishing back at the club line. So that was boy 15, the first mark of the course. And as is the way really, when you're just sailing down a river with no tacks or jibes and no real tactical opportunities, the fleet just spread themselves out in boat speed order. It wasn't really a problem because it was quite a pleasant sail. But seeing as we needed to win, or at least beat Irene, the yacht that was leading, didn't really give us much chance to make a difference. It's like they're staying in the gas permanently. We're not racing the swan. Oh. We're racing the clock. Yeah. Exactly, Dick. You tell us. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the fastest course all the time. Not very far with anybody. So is that Zari with the kite up? Yes. Yeah. 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 you're ready you need to watch this bit carefully you see this is North Kent Boy it's 10 miles down our river to the entrance and it was the furthest mark on our course and just here this is where we jibe this is the only manoeuvre we really had to make through the entire race it's amazing really isn't it when you look at a map of our river with all its twists and turns and with all the boys we had to go round in between that this was the only significant change of direction Coming up to South Kent. Got the swan right next to us. Right, so that is going to be coming in, Steve, when we go round. So this is the start of the beat back. And with the tide still flooding out, we decided to head inshore to get into the shallower water. And although it meant sailing a slightly longer distance, we figured this would be more than made up for by the reduced tide. 
You'll notice the boats around us tended to sail more the rum line, staying out into the river more, and although they were faster boats, we managed to hold on to our position. Things were actually getting a bit close as we came up to this mark. Amazingly, we thought we might even have to tack for a while, but Dick did a good job of staying close to the wind, and we counted on the fact that the tide was going to sweep us down onto the mark. And as it turned out, we arrived here perfectly.
so that was it. Although it wasn't the most exciting sail, with actually only one real manoeuvre in the entire race, the jibe around North Kent. No other tacks or jibes in it. But it was sunny and a bit of breeze and actually a really pleasant day on the water. And we ended up third overall in the race. Unfortunately, the boat we were trying to beat to win the championship won it. So it meant we came second overall. But still, it was good fun and it was a good result for Steve's old boat.